welcome to your All Active Reserve and Veterans TV series. This information education show has three goals. Tell who military veterans are, share about all organizations, auxiliaries, their programs and officers at all levels, and tell about memorials in all the cities we serve in this network. The VA system, state and county officers, hospitals and state homes are also featured. Please do check out our websites, share your program ideas and concerns via the contact information on the show. We open each month's show with a patriotic theme. Welcome once again to another program of Vets Visits on TV. This is program number 140 for the month of November, and we were pleased to be able to share with you the patriotic opening, which will um, be a part of the feature of our program uh, for today. And uh, we want to introduce our uh, guest, uh, and you may be on more regular too, is that right? Correct. I'm Neil Doyle with the Olmstead County Veterans Service Office. Okay, good. Now let's look at some dates in history for November. The 4th of November uh, was a Armistice Day, depending on where you are in our uh, network. The 8th in 1950 was the first all-jet air encounter combat, and that was in Korea. The 11th is Armistice Day, and now we call that, of course, Veterans Day, and we hope that all of you veterans will uh, be participating in some kind of service uh, experience that day in your communities. The 11th day, the 11th hour, and of course, this is the 11th month, is when the armistice was signed for World War I. The 12th of November was the Battle of Guadalcanal in World War II. And of course, the fourth Thursday, the 27th this year, is Thanksgiving Day. And I brought along my little friend, Neil, to uh, share in the experience today. So uh, we want to remember, too, that Ben Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national bird. You knew that, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't. Jerry, you you need to know fact. information like that, yeah. <laughs> and aren't we glad? I think the eagle is much more symbolic, symbolic, but uh, you know, stands for vigilance. I think the eagle is more vigilant than a turkey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now, um, Neil, let's get into our first feature, okay? Women veterans, wives of veterans, and veterans of foreign wars, ladies, and auxiliary members will want to take note of this feature. The 2008 National Ladies Auxiliary Conductorist to the Men at Sergeant in Arms was interviewed by Jerry at a recent Minnesota State Convention. Jan Tittle of the Southeastern United States shared some valid reasons for being an active auxiliary member. I'm Jan Tittle, National Conductorist with the Ladies Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. In the year 2009, I should be serving as your national president. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you hello, to tell you a little about Our Ladies Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and a little about my eligibility. I joined under my father, who was a World War II veteran. Uh, my father's deceased, 
but we still are very active. My family is very active in the Veterans of Foreign Wars Ladies Auxiliary. Many things are going on in our country today that we need to be recognizant of. Our, our Ladies Auxiliary does tons of work on a daily basis in our veterans' hospitals. We promote the youth activities. We help with the Voice of Democracy programs for the veterans of foreign wars. We have Americanism programs that we promote. We have a rehabilitation program where we help with the dollars for veterans that need help and assistance. We help our active duty military and their families in this time of our country being at war. So many of the National Guard uh, people are serving overseas and their families need our help. And we try to concentrate our efforts on those goals. Our national president, Sandy Germany, has decided that this year her motto will be from sea to shining sea, freedom is not free. One of the things that we try to do to, to, to live up to that motto is to take care of our active duty military and their families. Um, Sandy has three goals this year that she wants the organization to attain. One is, of course, 100 percent in membership. Our membership program is very important to us because with the numbers, we can get the politicians to pay attention to what we have to say and to, to try to help with our benefits for our veterans and our active duty military. Her second goal is for our organization to raise over $3 million this year for cancer aid and research. Our cancer program has been an ongoing project of the Ladies Auxiliary and for the last 16 years we have attained that goal and contributed over $3 million a year to the cancer aid and research program. Her last goal for the year is to fully fund so that it will be self-endowed our Patriotic Art Scholarship Program. It's for students in school um, who do who express themselves, their patriotism through their artwork, and it's a wonderful scholarship program that complements our Voice of Democracy program that the Veterans of Foreign War put on. I would encourage you, if you are at all interested in helping veterans, in helping our active duty military or their families, or if you just want to be a member of our organization, to seek out your local Ladies Auxiliary. You can find us most anywhere. We're in almost every town there is. We do an awful lot of community activities and volunteer work. If you have time, we'd love your time and your talents. If you don't have time to spend with us, we'd still love to have your membership because, as I said before, our country pays attention when we go to vote, when they know that the membership is behind the Veterans of Foreign Wars and their Ladies Auxiliary. It's a wonderful organization. It's a wonderful way for you to grow. Thank you so much for your time. Where is your home? My home, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. My home is in Charleston, South Carolina. And we are so appreciative that you came to Minnesota to share with our Ladies Auxiliary. Well, thank you. It's been a wonderful visit. You have a wonderful state here. It's my first time visiting your department. I hope that I'll be able to come back again soon. Thank you so much. Veterans with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or better known as ALS, may receive badly needed support for themselves and families after the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs announced that ALS will become a presumptively compensable illness for all veterans with 90 days or more of continuous active military service. Secretary Peake based his decision primarily on a November 2006 report by National Academy of Science, Sciences Institute of Medicine on the association between active duty service and ALS. The report titled Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis in Veterans, Review of Scientific Literature, analyzed numerous previous studies on the issue and concluded that there is limited and suggestive evidence of an association between military service and a later development of ALS. ALS, also referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a neuromuscular disease that affects about 20 to 30,000 people of all races and ethnic backgrounds in the United States. And it is often progressive and is almost always fatal. ALS causes degeneration of nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord that leads to muscle weakness, muscle atrophy, and spontaneous muscle activity. Currently, the ALS is unknown 
and there is no effective treatment. The new interim final regulation applies to all applications for benefits received by the VA on or after September 23, 2008, or that are pending before VA, the United States Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, or the United States Court of Appeals for Federal Circuit, Circuit on that date. Thank you, Neil, for that report. This month, as many of us express our thanks to Almighty God for the many blessings we value in America, is a perfect time to share this next feature, which I picked up here in Rochester. I was invited to a Sunday noon family dinner shared between Rochester and by TV also with Kosovo Camp Bonesteel, or Bonsteel, I should say. If your city's veterans groups are interested, we invite you to phone Mancini's Steakhouse in St. Paul, and you'll see the caption here, or some other uh, numbers which they will refer you to for details. And note, the video link is not clear at times, but you'll catch the spirit, I'm sure. Let's pick up on the action at the Mayo Civic Center and to from Rochester to Kosovo with love. And how did you acquire this position? Uh, well, back around about 2004, uh, Pat Harris and I were sitting up in St. Paul, Minnesota at Mancini's Charhouse, and kind of venting our frustrations that we could enjoy a delicious Mancini steak and our troops could not. And um, uh, we knocked around the idea of shipping steaks over to Iraq. And uh, so we met with the National Guard, talked to folks in the community, everyone gathered around, and we created a group called Serving Our Troops. Uh, it's basically a community-based initiative, originally uh, grounded in St. Paul, Minnesota. And in 2004, our first project went off like a success at the Excel Energy Center. We served 2,000 uh, state dinners to the troops serving in Kosovo, and we linked them uh, to their families back at the Excel Center in St. Paul. Since then, we have... Uh, We've done three other, two more projects, and we've done, this is a, our fourth project, Rochester to Kosovo. Um, in 06, we did St. Paul to Camp Shelby and served uh, 8,000 uh, stakes to their troops and family members that were deployed to Iraq. And then in 2007, in April, at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium, we served 4,500 family members and shipped 11,500 stakes to Iraq, and every national Minnesota National Guard member uh, was served a delicious 12-ounce uh, Mancini cut steak uh, throughout the entire Iraqi theater. And uh, it's the same steak that the troops would get if they went to Mancini's today and ordered their, their 12 ounce filet. Now, how long did it take to set up the Rochester project? You know, the Rochester project took about three months and a lot of community effort went into it. We've had some phenomenal local partners here. Uh, Joe Powers, Joe and Chris Powers, the Canadian hawker, and they're fantastic. Uh, Victoria's Restaurant, um, you know, uh, just a lot of great restaurants to provide the food today to feed the family members. Um, and we've got actually a delegation of 12 folks that have gone to Kosovo, brought the steaks with them. And uh, restaurant tours are grilling them over there right now. Some local representatives here. Uh, Ted Marty, the owner of the August Shells Grilling Company in New Orleans, Minnesota, generously provided beer for this event. And he's actually in Kosovo. Fortunately, it's a dry base. Otherwise, we'd be serving them some ice cold adult beverages. Um, so it took about three months, and thanks to Rochester's community support, we were able to pull it off. We're really excited for today. But how many do you, do you expect? I'm sorry, sir? How many do you expect today? Uh, today we expect about 1,500 uh, individuals. Of those, about 1,250 family members. We've also got uh, you know, a few hundred uh, phenomenal vets groups uh, from the town here that have been deeply supportive and have been spreading the word nonstop, and, and we can't thank them enough. The vets groups are truly what it's all about. One final question. Who are some of the dignitaries and the entertainment features that will be on today? Certainly. Uh, well, over in Kosovo, we brought Martin Zeller from uh, the Gear Daddies band. He's actually playing in Kosovo right now. In Rochester here, uh, we are pleased for entertainment standpoint. We have Booker Minnie, the uh, Rochester area, mm -hmm. and Paddy Wagon, a St. Paul-based Irish band that was in Kosovo in 04. Uh, we're honored to have the governor here to speak today. Uh, we have Mayor Ardell Breedy from Rochester speaking. Uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar is coming in as well. And Senators Coleman and, and Tim Walsh will also be addressing this group uh, via video. So we're really, really excited and really appreciate the support. And, uh, 
excited for a really fun day connecting troops and their family. It's, it's like we say, it's a simple thing, dinner with the family. And John Marshall, we appreciate you so much uh, helping to instigate the project with Rochester. And, and you actually live in? I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. And you brought it into us and we're glad for the import. Thank you so much. We can't, we can't thank enough for your support. Thank you. I would like to introduce a new member of our Serving Our Troops team, and he has been absolutely incredible uh, and supportive of today's event. He is truly, truly just a wonderful, wonderful person. Ladies and gentlemen, Rochester's Mayor, Mr. Arnell Breed.
they'll look to people like the folks who are on the other end of the screen in Kosovo as their role models. These are people who said, honor is important, duty is important, service is important, respect is important, patriotism is important, valor is important, responsibility is important, a country is important. Those are values that are really quite at the cornerstone and the secrets to the success of our nation. And we wouldn't have this country unless we had these folks and the people who served before them. You know, we live in challenging and controversial times. So the question comes for each of us, you know, what are we willing to stand for? And the people who are serving in Kosovo on behalf of our nation, keeping the peace, helping a new country be born, declared its independence not long ago, and I was there just a month or two ago, they're doing a great job. They said they're willing to serve. They're willing to make a sacrifice and a commitment on behalf of our country. So on behalf of our state, thank you to them. Thank you to you as families. We hope you enjoy this uh, small gesture of appreciation and, and respect that we have for you to this meal and this gathering here today. And God speak to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Uh, and Pat Harris, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kosovo. Thank you, Johnny. Bye, Kosovo here. Uh... That's absolutely fantastic. All right, folks, well, we're going to uh, get things moving here. Uh, I don't think up there audio is very really good, but you can tell that this particular soldier over in uh, Costco is talking to his family, who are also on camera, right about here. Did everybody taking in a Mancini steak, we kind of said to ourselves, how can we get Joel one of these steaks over to Iraq? 
and it really became our mission for the next four years. And, and four, year, four years later, we were in Camp Shelby, serving 8,000 before they left for Iraq. The Camp Shelby is? In uh, Mississippi. Okay. Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Then uh, we went to Kosovo and uh, made a second trip back here this year to Kosovo. And our ultimate goal was getting to Iraq, which we were able to do last year in May. Uh, brought him over the Mancini sirloin steak. Uh, nothing special other than it was from home. And uh, you know that has become kind of uh, a wonderful thing. Now we brought it down to Rochester, and this is what the third or fourth. This is about the fourth. fourth. Yeah. Now we brought it to Rochester, and I can see just a wonderful support of. of veterans and, and restaurants down here that have taken this and hopefully can produce something every year with this and, and possibly take care of not only Iraq but Kosovo because what, what really matters to them is not so much the steak dinner it's kind of symbolic of we didn't forget we didn't forget about you right. so we're very proud to be part of it very proud to contribute and uh, honor our fighting men and women that other communities in our 18 state network. Will yeah, and they don't have to follow. Already. Right, and they don't have to follow our exact lead or model. They can develop whatever they want based on their restaurants. As I always said, you know, you give a restaurant tour a gun, and this country's in a lot of trouble. But you give them a steak tongs, and we can do a lot of good with it. So and that's kind of where we're at. Many of you I know have checked in with our website over the past some nine years that we've had the site and you've seen it here on uh, the captions here in Vets Visits. Now the National VFW has since August begun carrying Vets Visits and you'll see the caption for picking it up from the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars site. And then you can link to Vets Visits. Incidentally, that first week in August, Vets Visits alone received some 10,000 hits. I received that word from Brad. That first week, that word came from their webmaster. And other webmasters are welcome to add the series to your links as well. Just please let me know when you do. Well, that's a wrap for this month of November. We're so happy that you joined us for the program. If you have any questions, uh, check out the credits that close the show. And uh, Neil, do you have any uh, final word for us? Yes, everyone have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And that's a ditto for me to you as well. Thanks for tuning in. Take care from Vets Visits on TV. Thank you for joining us for this month's show. Seen in over 350 communities for over 3,500 half-hour periods. Our websites have additional information about the show and are updated bi-monthly. To contact us, you are welcome to use one of these electronic methods. For all ground mail with questions, suggestions for future programs, you may use this address. Our IRS nonprofit status is 501c3, Information Education. The Minnesota Commissioner of VA and these state level organizations believe in and endorse Vets Visits. Join us next time, won't you, for Vets Visits on TV.